Good morning. This is a graph from resilientearth.com. It comes from the book The Resilient Earth, Science, Global Warming, and the Future of Humanity. I recently made reference to this graph and was told the graph incorrectly shows the distribution of infrared radiation from the Earth. Uh, the person also... Okay, I was told this incorrectly shows the distribution of the infrared radiation from the Earth. And the person that pointed this out to me went on to say, as you can see, it is... Well, he showed me another graph. And he said, as you can say, see, it is displaced in the resilient Earth graph to suggest carbon dioxide absorbs very little outgoing radiation. But from the actual observations, um, it is even evident that the displacement is to be far far kinder than this graph deserves an error. Okay, so let's look at the graphs that I was actually shown. Um, this one has the most information in it. Okay, um, the dotted lines in this graph show the theoretical distribu uh, black body distribution curves in the dotted lines. Black body distribution is sometimes called the Planck distribution. Um, it is a histogram, basically, of how much intensity of light you have at each wavelength or each frequency. Depending on the temperature of the object, you have a different histogram. Depending on the temperature of the object, you have a different histogram. So if I have a 325 Kelvin object, it should have a histogram like the top curve here. And if I have a 300 Kelvin object, it should have a histogram that looks like um, the second dotted line right here. What are we looking at here then? Um, the solid line represents the spectrum actually observed by the Nimbus 4 satellite looking down at a black body in the Sahara Desert. Now I wasn't told precisely what object the satellite was looking at. Was what? What is a black body? A black top road could be kind of a black body. A, a parking lot, a large expanse of uninterrupted desert. In any case, we can guess what the temperature of that surface was based on some section of the solid curve. If I look at this part of the curve, I would guess that the temperature is somewhere around 320 Kelvin. That is because the solid line appears about four-fifths of the way between the 300 Kelvin curve and the 325 Kelvin curve. On the other hand, if I just saw this part of the curve, I would guess that the Sahara expanse was being viewed was closer to 310 Kelvin. Both of those temperatures are uncomfortably hot. If I view, On the other hand, if I viewed this part of the curve, I would think that the temperature was somewhere between 275 and 300 Kelvin. 275 Kelvin is getting down to an uncomfortably cold temperature. Now, how does this graph compare to the graph given in Resilient Earth? This graph shows that the bulk of the infrared thermal spectrum goes from about maybe 8.3 to 25 micrometers, but of course it extends further than that um, to about 30 or 40 micrometers. Going back to the graph at Resilient Earth, they uh, put the thermal spectrum of the Earth here to be about between 8 to 10 micrometers, and maybe a little bit it extends over to uh, 15 there. Now the Resilient Earth graph does put the carbon dioxide spectrum at the right place, right in here, between like 10 to 20 micrometers. Maybe that is too wide. From here, it looks like the absorption spectrum of carbon dioxide is only from about 12.5 to 16.7 micrometers. That's this um, depression right here. Now what is the carbon dioxide? I think of it as a transparent fog that is blocking light and glowing between 12.6 and 16.7 micrometers. Uh, the carbon dioxide gas is transparent in these other wavelengths, meaning you can see right through to the ground if you're viewing in colors 
between 8.3 to 12.5 micrometers. What about this? Around 1050 per centimeter, there's another non-transparent region. Is that carbon dioxide gas blocking the light, or is it something else? This graph suggests that um, something suggests an expectation that ozone blocks light around 1050 per centimeter. So most likely this is the gas of ozone causing this absorption. Now why might it be expected that we would have a peak wavelength of 9 micrometers here at resilient earth while it looks like there is a peak wavelength around uh, 15 micrometers between 12.5 and 16.7, about 15 micrometers here uh, with the Nimbus 4 satellite. I think this comes back to Vine's displacement law and its two different forms. The first equation that you come to on Wikipedia under Vine's displacement law is this one, lambda max times t equals 0.0029 meter kelvin. If I want to find the peak wavelength for a temperature of 325 Kelvin, I will plug in 0 0.0029 divided by 325 and get 8.9 times 10 to the negative sixth. That's 8.9 micrometers. Now that is really, really close to the peak wavelength we have at Resilient Earth, right around 9 micrometers. And that must be right, because who can argue with math? However, what we're dealing with here is the peak of a histogram. What we're dealing here with here is a peak of a histogram. And histograms look wildly different when you accumulate data according to a quantity or its reciprocal. In order to illustrate that point, imagine that we have collected 10 waves uh, of frequencies 1 hertz, 2 hertz, 3 hertz, 4 hertz, 5 hertz, 6 hertz, 7 hertz, 8 hertz, 9 hertz, and 10 hertz. We have one wa wave of each wavelength, and um, that would be called a uniform distribution. So since there are e equal numbers of each frequency, um, this is called a uniform distribution. Now, if we had collected these same term waves in terms of their wavelengths, the distribution would look like this. One meter, one half meter, one third meter, one fourth meter, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, one ninth, and one tenth of a meter. If we asked for the distribution of waves according to their wavelength, we would have a big peak because we would have five waves between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 meters. And there would be no waves at all between 0 0.6 and 0 0.9 meters. So what constitutes a correct histogram and an incorrect histogram? It depends on what quantity is uniform in your horizontal axis. For this diagram, the uniform quantity is wave number, 400 per centimeter, 600 per centimeter, 800 per centimeter, 1000 per centimeter, 1200 per centimeter, etc. This same diagram is non-uniform in wavelength. See the space between 25 to 16.7, or the difference between 25 and 16.7 is not the same as the difference between 8.3 and 7.1 micrometers. This, act, this diagram, on the other hand, though it shows the wavelength in micrometers, it would have, or it's not uniform in micrometers. The distance between one and two is not the same as the distance between 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, 5 and 6. This would be probably uniform in wave number. So if we have a histogram using wave number as our horizontal axis, what equation should be used to calculate the peak wave number? The Wikipedia article on, on Vine's displacement law actually gives the equation for um, the frequency for the peak frequency, uh, but not in a terribly convenient form for wave number. And calculate this number, 5.879 times 10 to the 10th hertz per Kelvin, 
by uh, plugging in alpha equals 2.821, h is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, Boltzmann's constant is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd, you multiply all that out and you get this number here. Um, then to get Wien's law for peak wave number, we can use this relationship that the wave number, k, is the frequency of the light divided by the speed of light. So I'm just going to take basically that formula for frequency, which was 5.879 times 10 to the 10th hertz times the temperature, and divide it by 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which is the speed of light. So that gives us 196 waves per meter times the temperature or if it's 196 waves per meter, it'll be 1.96 waves per centimeter. So our final formula for Wien's law should be Kmax equals 1.96 per centimeter kel Kelvin times T in Kelvin. Okay, so checking that with our Sahara graph, we can see that 1.96 times 325 is 637, which is somewhere around there, where the maybe right there where the peak is. Uh, 1.96 times 300 is 588, which would be somewhere around here. Let's see, here's 600. It actually looks like the peak is right around 600 there. 1.96 times 275 is 539 and that would be somewhere about a little more than halfway between 400 and 600, which would put it right around there, maybe. So I wanted to make this video because I realized my own confusion about Wien's Law. I know I've been teaching the equation as lambda equals t, lambda times t equals 0 0.0029 meter Kelvin, and that's the way it's presented in Wikipedia. I realized that that's probably not the best formulation of the idea since all of the most useful power and energy relations and graphs are going to be using frequency and wave number rather than wavelength. So I'll be switching over to k equals t times 1.96 per centimeter Kelvin for most pedagogical purposes.